Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Andrew Isley. Thanks for tuning in. This is um, a tutorial that we're going to cover sequencing drums with the Reed Drum and the Dr. Octorex Loop Player. Um, in I've already got our sequence uh, from the last tutorial. It's open. We've got a little simple bass line right there. I'm going to go ahead and mute that by hitting the little M here. And let's just focus on some, some drums. Um, right up here we have a re drum that's created. I went through and selected a drum kit. So if we look in the re drum drum kit folder, we'll see all these different styles of kits. I, put, I, put, I was picking uh, the drum and bass kit number one. And again, that assigns all of the sounds. Now, I can use the keys on my keyboard. To play all of those sounds. But I find it uh, far more creative uh, to utilize the, the drum machine. Um, I've always been a big fan of drum machines ever since they were created uh, or ever since I got my hands on them. I just thought they were fascinating. And uh, this one's definitely cool. It, it works a lot like the uh, the older Roland ones. So let's look at how we can create a, a sequence. Um, we saw a little bit earlier with our overview, but let's go a little bit more in depth with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. So while this is running, um, you'll see here we're on uh, instrument number one. If I go up and I hit the little triangle, which is essentially a play button, I can hear that. So with this track selected, wherever I place a hit, that's where we're going to hear that particular drum sound. And another cool thing that we can do when programming, you can click and hold and then drag to your right and drop in a, a 16th note pattern. Now this sounds uh, pretty mechanical in terms of that. If we listen to that hi-hat, I'm gonna go ahead and solo it. So that sounds like a machine. I mean, it is a drum machine, but we can uh, we can breathe some, some life into this a little bit, make it sound a little bit more rhythmic so it's not so constant. Uh, and an easy way of doing that is by adjusting the dynamics. So I can grab my little dynamic switch and drag it down to soft. And then on every other one, change it up. And I can adjust the velocity. So really getting to its extreme, bringing it all the way up. And I can increase the level a little bit. So now we're getting that. Another thing we can do is use shuffle. So there you can hear the shuffle going. Now the way shuffle works in terms of, of this, uh, if I wanted to, to change the global shuffle, um, how this is done is down on our, our groove mixer. So down here you'll see shuffle. This is the global shuffle for the entire program. Any instrument that has a shuffle button on it, um, there's one in the... Uh, arpeggiator, there's one on the matrix pattern sequencer, I think. Um, but we can increase the amount or decrease the amount of shuffle. So there's a slight bit of shuffle on this particular instrument. So now I can close my groove mixer. Now let's go ahead and unsolo this. Perhaps you don't like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take out Now this is sort of a static drum loop because it's only one bar long. So what I'd like to do is double this up and make it two bars long. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop for a second. Now in order for us to do that, we need to increase the number of steps. So here it says 16 steps. If I click on this, Let's bring it up to 32 steps. The reason why I'm using 16 and 32 is because we're on a 16th note resolution. That means each one of these numbers represents a 16th note. Hence, there are 16 uh, buttons or slots at a 16th note resolution, so this is one bar. To make it two bars, we need uh, 32 steps. So if I hit play, 
it seems like it stops, but what it's doing is going to um, beats uh, 17 through 32. So in order to edit those steps, over here you'll see this edit step switch. I can bring this up to 17 through 32 and then go through and go ahead and add uh, a few more drums. Uh, every other one. Add some variations in there. Now I can go through and add a clap, maybe on the nine. So I have this pattern here, right? So let's take a look at how we can uh, copy this pattern to a, a different pattern section. So if I click here on pattern number one, we're in bank A, pattern one, and I hit Apple C or Command C for copy, and then I select pattern two and hit Command V for paste, I've just made a copy of that. So now I can go back to that hi-hat track and fill those all in. Or maybe I want to do every other one like I did before. And we can do the same thing on 17 through 32. So now when we hit play, but I can go back to pattern one So that's pretty fun. Um, now there are ways we can record basically the automation of switching between these two. That's one way of working with our redrum. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to move my cursor back to the beginning or back to measure 17 and I will hit record. Now I have the pre on so it's going to give me a four count in which is good. And um, uh, while it's playing, uh, as it plays through, I'm going to go ahead and switch it uh, back and forth between one and two. And what we're going to do is record the patterns on this track. And there you have it. So there you can see pattern A1, A2, A1, A2. I can make a copy of this by holding an option whoops, and dragging. And if you click on the upper portion, it gets a drop down list. And I can switch to say pattern three. Now I haven't programmed anything on pattern three, but that's how you can sort of, uh, you're basically uh, sequencing the patterns. Now I don't really like to work that way. I like to have the actual MIDI file uh, with us. So what we can do, and this is one of my favorite things about this instrument, I can click pattern one, and let's say I want it to be from um, 17 through 21. That's where I want to put pattern one. So with that selected, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either right click on the instrument. This is the same exact thing as selecting the instrument and going up to edit. You'll see copy pattern to track. So when I do that, it drops the pattern down in between that. Now I can move my locators. Now it's, it's going to make a copy of that. Uh, it'll repeat over and over in between the locators. So if I made this really long and I selected pattern two and did the same thing, 
copy pattern to track, it'll copy it all the way out. Now, I didn't necessarily want to go all the way to that. I really wanted to get to uh, 17 through 25. So I can grab this and move it back. And then move my cursor back. So now if I double click on this, it opens up into the uh, the drum editor. So here we can see all of the different drums, the drum hits, their names off to the side. Uh, we can zoom in on it again using H to zoom. So we can kind of see what's going on in there. Other cool things we can do, we haven't really talked about editing velocity, um, but let's say you wanted to edit some velocities, uh, you can use the pencil tool. The pencil tool is really easy. You can just click and drag and change the velocities of those different sounds. Uh, another way of doing it is, let's say I only wanted to, sel to uh, affect the velocity of my claps. So I can select my claps and then with the pencil tool I hold down shift and it will allow me to just affect the selected tracks. Notice how there's other uh, information on that same point in terms of like my hi-hats and I don't want to edit those. If I don't hold down shift and I do that it edits them both together. So just keep that in mind. You can see how it changes color too as I'm dragging up and down in terms of the velocity. This is the same thing that happens in the key editor window, by the way. Another thing that we can do is, uh, is to hold down Option while you have this. And this is how we can create crescendos or decrescendos. Uh, if I wanted it to get louder over time, I can use the Line tool. So with the Pencil tool engaged, you hold down Option and you draw the line. And that will affect all of uh, that data. Now, notice that. See how it sounded kind of phasey? That is because it's getting double triggered. Uh, I have both the internal sequencer of the redrum playing, but I'm also, I have all of the MIDI data that I just copied to the track. So it's doubling up on that. So what I can do is go up here and disable the enable pattern section. So this pattern won't play, but it, it should sound pretty much the same because it's coming from um, our track down below. So if I hit play, So you can see how that uh, crescendo thing works. It's really, really fun to use that with uh, like drum rolls, whether it's a kick drum or a snare drum. You can make it uh, get increasingly faster and louder uh, as you're leading up to a, a big breakdown or, or you know an explosion of some kind. You know you want the the sound to have lots of dynamics, and that's kind of a cool trick you can use. Uh, but we'll look at that a little bit later when we get into the arrangement. So that's basically how we can use the redrum. Let's take a look at the uh, Dr. Octorex loop player. So I'm going to go down to the Dr. Octorex and open it up. And here we have the college rock drums. I'm going to go ahead and mute my redrum for a second. So any of the loops that we bring up, you'll notice as I, as I open up this instrument, I can open up the Dr. Octorex programmer. And within that, you'll see all of the different slices that we can edit. Um, you can do some really fun stuff like reversing of sounds. A lot of fun to experiment. We cover a lot more of this in the advanced book. Uh, but what I wanted to show you here is how to copy this pattern to track. Now, it's really simple. It's the same thing that we just did with the, with the uh, redrum in terms of copying the pattern to the track. The only difference is this has a dedicated button, copy, copy loop to track. So, and it will place that loop in between the two locators. So if I hit that button, it drops it in. You can see that this was a, uh, I guess a two bar loop. And if I double click on it, you can see each of the slices. Incidentally, you can play this as well. So 
So I'm hitting keys on my MIDI controller. Pretty cool stuff. You can, uh, it's really easy. You can come in here, find the loops. You can do a basic, um, just gonna select it and hit the letter P again. We'll start that sequence. Now remember, it's the same type of thing. Enable loop playback. So I can turn off because the, the, the sequence is actually being triggered from here. And you can see how the slices go all the way up. But it's completely possible for me to grab any of these sounds and move them around. So you can do That one's getting a little bit cut off. But as you can see, you can do a, like basic remixing. So you can take any kind of drum loop and really chop it up, move it around. It's really easy to manipulate and uh, create different styles of grooves and things using this. And the other great thing about the Dr. Octorex, like I can pick this last one here, and you're not stuck with just drum loops. Um, I, can, I can leave the, the drum loops and actually go into instrument loops. And in here, you'll find some guitars. You can also find some pretty cool uh, hip hop loops. So definitely go through and explore because there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with your Dr. Octorex. So that about wraps up this on uh, this tutorial on sequencing drums with the redrum and the Dr. Rex, Dr. Octorex loop player. Uh, in our next tutorial, let's take a look at how we can utilize the matrix pattern generator.